What is going on, everybody? It is your boy, Bad Dog, back with a New York Giants video. I know I'm wearing the Yankee hat, but it is what it is. Just want to say thank you guys and girls so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you can do me a big favor, smack the hell out of that like button. Once you start watching the video, it always helps it out more than you would know. So hit the like button. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. The links are in the description below. I'd also greatly appreciate a follow on each of those formats as I'm trying to grow my social media a little bit more. I will follow you back. The sport's been very good on both of those formats, so I really do appreciate it. I will be live tonight at 10.15 for the United States and France, the gold medal game in the Olympics. Obviously, the United States trying to exact a measure of revenge when it counts. Most France was able to win the first game. Let's see if the United States can return the favor and win the gold. Anyway, let's talk about the New York Giants. Third time this offseason or preseason, if you will, that a New York Giant has retired. This time, Zach Fulton has decided to hang it up, saying the same exact thing Joe Looney did. My body just can't keep up with my spirit. Now, I mentioned Joe Judge before and said, you think Joe Judge is being a little bit too hard on these guys? Now, I see it in the media everywhere. I don't know if they said this or not before. I just noticed it now. But that was my question. Some of these veterans coming from different teams haven't had to deal with the Joe Judge training camp, and is Joe Judge a little bit too hard on these guys? But let's face it, in the grand scheme of things, these guys were probably not going to make much of an impact on the New York Giants in the 2021 season. But it does beg the question, what is Joe Judge exactly doing at training camp? Now, the big thing is that your main cogs, your guys like Sterling Shepard and others, have come out and defended Joe Judge and say they like it. And, and again, as Giants fans, we see these guys playing hard for Joe Judge. So... I'm not going to read too much into it. And as Bill Parcells would once said, and I love it, if the player's ego is too fragile, uh, he can take a hike. I want guys who want to be Giants. And I think that's what it is. This conditioning that Joe Judge brings is going to make your team stronger in the fourth quarter. And that's really where you want to be at your strongest. When the Knicks were at their best, in the, well, in my lifetime, when they were at their best in the 1990s, Pat Riley and Jeff Van Gundy killed these guys with conditioning, and the Knicks were always the best fourth quarter team on the floor. I mean, it was always the conditioning that really helped those guys become as good as they were. Not that they had the most talent, because that Knicks team did not have the most talent, but they outworked a lot of people, which is kind of like the Giants. Do the Giants have the most talent in the NFL? No. But in a close game, when you need to outwork a guy, when you can hit that next level or shift to that next gear in the fourth quarter, when you really need a drive, the defense is gassed, that's when this is going to pay off. So again, I'm not really concerned about Joe Judge's technique. It's just weird that all these guys are retiring. I don't ever now. I don't know about other teams because I just follow the Giants, but I don't ever remember three guys retiring like within a week of one another in training camp for the same team. It's kind of strange. Uh, but somebody that is going to be here in 2021 is Saquon Barkley. Now, reports have come out that Saquon Barkley may not be available until week three, which is kind of what I was saying, you know, that he may not be ready for week one. I said this a little while ago or in a few videos ago, and I don't think that people can expect Saquon Barkley to be ready for week one because an ACL tear takes a long time to recover from, and he had to delay the surgery due to the inflammation and the swelling in the knee, so he didn't have this surgery until November. When Saquon Barkley comes back, whenever this is, the Giants want him to be at 100%. You cannot force this guy back week one just to be there, only to have him hurt himself again. Now, I'm not even talking about his reconstructed knee. If there is any injury there, any lingering of an injury there, any pain there, when you're an athlete or a person, for that matter, when you're hampering an injury or you're trying to protect an injury, a lot of times you're going to end up hurting something else. And you don't want that to happen. You don't want Saquon Barkley to be favoring the knee and then all of a sudden he pulls a hamstring on the other leg and then you got a real issue here. So the main key here is to get Saquon Barkley back when he's 100% ready to go. You're going to have to ease him in as well. When he comes in in week three, he can't just come in there and get the ball 25 times. These guys got to get in football shape. I've said this before as well. There's one thing to being in great physical shape, to be able to work out, to be able to squat a car like Saquon Barkley does. The guy's not human. Now, the guy's genetics are next level, but there's also being in football shape and conditioning for football where you're getting hit, when you're running in pads, where you have to build up your endurance and your wind and everything else. So you can be strong in the fourth quarter. So you can turn that, you know, that sliver of daylight into a 60 yard touchdown, or you can push forward and make that three yard gain that you need to make when you're hit at the line of scrimmage. These are the things that Saquon Barkley needs to bring to the New York Giants. So 
If he's not there week one or week two, I'm not going to throw a fit. I would much rather have a healthy Saquon Barkley going into this season, whenever that first game is, knowing that he can make the entire season and that he's going to get stronger as this season progresses because the Giants obviously need Saquon Barkley. There are still a lot of questions on this offense when it comes to what Daniel Jones can do, what Kenny Galladay is going to be able to do. Can Sterling Shepard avoid the concussions? Can Evan Ingham catch the ball? Can the offensive line hold up? Can Jason Garrett um, get Kadarius Toney involved? Can Jason Garrett scheme a game plan that works to Daniel Jones' strength? Can Daniel Jones read the defense? There's so many things that go into it. But one thing that we need to know for certain is that Saquon Barkley is 100% ready to go because the Giants' depth behind him is not the best. Yes, they re-signed Alfred Morris, and Alfred Morris did a nice job for us last year. Devontae Booker, what can he be? You know, he's pretty much been a backup his entire career. Do you really want him carrying the load? Are either one of these guys as good as Wayne Gallman was for us last year? Wayne Gallman ended up being a pleasant surprise. So you need Saquon Barkley. You don't want him to come back for a couple games and get hurt again where you're relying on Booker and Alfred Morris for the entire season. And I don't think the Giants are going to take any chance with it because he is our best offensive player. Uh, there is no doubt about that. So that's all I got in this video, guys. Of course, I always want to know uh, your opinion. Do you think Saquon Barkley should be held out until week three? Do you think that he should come back week one? Do you think that they should hold him out longer than week three? Or do you think like I do and just say whenever it is that he's 100%, that's when you put him in the backfield and you ease his way into maybe 10 to 15 touches his first couple of games and kind of build up his endurance. This is what the preseason is for. This is what preseason games is for. This is what training camp is for. It's really to get you conditioned for football. And unfortunately, when you're on the pup list, you stake on Barkley and you can't get all these reps in preseason and you can't build up that endurance and you can't get in that football shape you're going to have to do it during the regular season and he's just not going to get the workload that he can and then even at a point how much do you worry about the knee going forward it ruined Robert Griffin because they brought him back too soon it didn't ruin Adrian Peterson because the guy's a freak of nature so either way man you're looking at one end of the spectrum or the other do you want Saquon Barkley to be the Adrian Peterson do you want him to be, obviously you don't want him to be what happened to RG3. So that's what I'm saying. He needs to be back when he's 100%. That's my aspect. That's how I look at it. But again, what do you guys think in the comments section? As always, I look forward to your comments, whether you agree or disagree. And I hope to see you tonight uh, for the gold medal game between France and the United States. I'm looking forward to calling it. I love calling basketball. I just love calling games in general. So I hope to see you all tonight. And if I don't, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Talking Giants is tomorrow night. Chris and I will talk about all this as well as take your questions from the chat. So I'll see you next time. It is bad to get a dizzle and I'm out. Peace.